video on um, upping your grade again. So, um, I was chatting to a friend and he was talking about um, using stocks in in cooking and uh, he sees all these videos online and people are using these really good stocks they're like really kind of quite gelatinous have i got some stock yes so i've got some chicken stock so that's some chicken stock that i've made that's in the jar and it's really gelatinous um it's a white chicken stock it's a bit cloudy um but it's a white chicken stock so it's got it's not had any kind of like uh haven't browned the bones or the vegetables in it so it's a white chicken stock but he was talking about how they always the stocks look really good and these people obviously make them themselves and we were talking about that and he kind of he kind of i said to him do you know i said it's just a bit they just take a lot of effort you know to kind of get that kind of flavor out of a stock to then use in a cooking at home it's just a lot of work you know like you, you might kind of there'd be a much as much work goes into the stock as potentially the rest of of the rest of the meal you know like time wise if you if you uh, simmering bones for for 12 hours 24 hours it's a lot of work so so i was kind of thinking you know can we make it can we cheat a little bit and easily improve um the the stocks that you use at home and the gravy that you make and all those type of things so i mean you can use you can use chicken stock cubes or beef stock cubes um or no, oxo oxo is pretty good but there's a there's a there's a taste to them which isn't like a particularly natural stock kind of quite flavor um and the vegetable ones mm, i'm not really a fan of the vegetable stock cubes um doesn't matter how good you buy them so what I was kind of thinking well can we make a vegetable stock and then we will improve the vegetable stock flavor with some oxo beef cubes um, and then it's got that kind of more of a proper stock kind of flavor to it so we're using the the oxo cubes to kind of like lift the flavor of vegetable stock so i'm going to do it in the st and then i'm also kind of aware that you know like we want kind of minimum effort maximum output on this so i'm going to do it i'm going to do it three ways i'm just going to make a plain simple vegetable stock and we'll just drain off the liquid and then we'll use that water to make stock and then what we'll also do is we'll puree down the leftover vegetables after uh, we've made the stock and then we'll extract more flavor out of those those vegetables by squeezing them through a cloth so that'll be the two that we're going to get from this pan and then i have roasted some vegetables off so we're going to get three stocks so there is twice the amount of vegetables there is, that there is in there than there is in there i can't remember just what kind of ratios they are there's quite a lot of carrot and i just kind of went through the fridge fridges and just kind of pulled out what i had vegetable wise so there's there's kind of like a like a bulb of celery two leeks about two kilos of carrots and about a kilo of onions which i've kind of split between these two so that's got a third in that's got two thirds in that's just plain water chopped it small now I've chopped it small because we want to extract as much flavor as possible so we'll put that on the back and we'll turn that on and there's three liters of liquid in there and then we've got this pan here which we're going to put these vegetables in uh, which we've roasted so these will have stuck to the pan but that's not a problem that's all goodness so i realize that you kind of like do you really want to be roasting vegetables to make a stock probably not that's probably a little bit too much work for most people it's more washing up so do you really want to do that probably not but if the oven's on and you're cooking something in the oven, you might just fancy throwing some vegetables in to the uh, roasting tin in the oven and roasting at the same time as you do a, a joint of beef or slow cooking something. So maybe you would want to do that. So that's why we're doing this one. So there is three liters of liquid in there. So we're going to put in 750 milliliters of liquid in there, which must be more than that. Is that right? No, it must be one point. Oh, no, it must be one point five liters, isn't it? So we want another about that much in. But then we've got the goodness in that tray there, so we'll just put that liquid in there and heat that pan. And 
what we'll do, we'll put that pan back in the oven. Just those extra bits of goodness there, which the caramelised burnt bits, uh, which will go, well not burnt, caramelised is the word. We'll just stick that in the oven, and what that water will do is it'll just melt those, those caramelised bits, and then we'll uh, be able to lift those and that'll kind of improve the flavour. So that's in there. I've left the skins on um, the roasted vegetable stock uh, because we'll get some extra colour from the the skins of the onions. Um, so there we go. So I'll probably put those the other way around because that's a bigger burner, that's a smaller burner, that's a bigger pan so it needs a bigger burner. Uh, and then we'll just simmer for an hour, maybe an hour and a half and I think that will extract as much flavour out of the vegetables as possible. Now we need to put in quite a lot of water so what I have found with how can I describe this I haven't got the words to describe it because my education wasn't particularly brilliant so uh, you want to extract as much flavor out of the vegetable so this is counterintuitive right you want to extract as much flavor from the vegetables as possible so therefore you actually need to put in more water than you actually think because the more water that you add to a stock the more flavour is going to be drawn out of the vegetables or bones that you're going to be making a stock from. Now it gets to the point where it's far too much liquid um, and you need to reduce that liquid down after you've kind of made the stock but you do need to put in more water than you actually think. If you put, if I put in half at one point, say with the, just the plain old vegetable stock, if I put in half that amount of liquid, so I just put in the 1.5 litres just to cover, co cover the vegetables, after two hours, the vegetables will still have some flavour in them. What we're actually aiming for is for all the flavour, for as much of the flavour as possible to come out of those vegetables. So we need to have a sufficient amount of water in a stock. We're also going to lose some through evaporation. I hope I made that clear. I hope I made that clear. It took me a while in life to kind of to work that one out about stocks that just nearly burnt myself. So, up to the boil, slow simmer, hour and a half, maybe two hours, and then we're back to give it a taste. And then, oh, and when the uh, tray in the oven has um, given up all its flavour, we'll pour that in there as well. Now, I did roast those vegetables in a little bit of chicken fat, so there'll be a little. It might go a little bit cloudy uh, because we've got some fat in there. But I just can't be bothered. I don't think there's that much to kind of skim off. It's probably cooked the vegetables, and it'll come to the top as a bit of scum. But anyway, I'm waffling on, and it, you know, I wanted this to be not be a hugely long video because they always go far too long. So we have cooked the stock and we have drained them. So those are the vegetables from just the unroasted veg. So they've been drained and then these are the, oh, we need to taste everything, don't we? We'll do a proper tasting of the vegetables as well. See if we've actually got all the flavor out of them. So these are the roasted vegetables. So see how these taste. Yeah, see they've lost loads of their flavor. It's all right actually. All right, but I've lost loads of flavour. So that flavour should have gone into the stock, and then these vegetables. So these are cut smaller, so we will lose more flavour. And um, the bigger you keep vegetables, the more flavour that vegetables retain. But also, kind of like in stocks, that you want you want carrots to um, you leave them large in a, cook, a stock that you can cook for hours, because otherwise they just puree down to to nothing. So, what do these vegetables taste like from the from the other stock? More flavour's gone from them than from the roasted ones. So, this is the roasted vegetable stock. That is the pure vegetables. So what I did was I took um, the correct amount of vegetables to stock, pureed it down with a hand blender, and then put, just put it through a, a cloth. Uh, so therefore, we'll hopefully extract more flavour out of those vegetables that way. And then we've got this, this is the stock from the, just the normal stock. So how did the rest of it work out? Um, so it was yield wise, I'm just talking about the yield wise, um, I weighed the stock, the, um, that stock. So we ended up with 1.5 liters worth of liquid and we ended up with 2.5 five yeah about 2.5 liters worth of vegetables left over 
So there will be a slightly higher yield once we've pureed them and squeezed that out of them because we'll be getting the juice out of the vegetables. So let's just do a taste. And then it's getting a bit late. I can't be really be bothered to um, add some beef stock to it tonight, uh, but we'll do that in the next part of the video. We just need to taste these stocks as they are. So this will probably have the least amount of flavour, but we'll see. No, it's good, is that? No, that's good. That's got a good flavour of vegetables. So if that's good, this should be better because we're squeezing uh, juice out of extra flavour out of, out of the vegetables. It will taste different again once all that liquid has been squeezed out of that pulp. So, but how does it taste? Yeah, it's got more flavour to it. It's got more sweetness because of the carrot. Maybe a little bit too much carrot in it. The only problem with pureeing that and then straining it is you get more cloudy stock. But if we're going for flavour rather than, than, than appearance, then pureeing is better. And then roasting the vegetables. How does that taste? Delicious. <laughs> Absolutely delicious. That's interesting. It's almost like you'd you could tell some that, well, not a professional, but you could tell most people that was a meat stock and they wouldn't know the difference. Otherwise, it's, it's just vegetables. But it's, well, it's got a little bit of chicken fat in it. So if you used oil instead of chicken fat, no one kind of knows. That's delicious, is that? So that certainly, using that as a base for your gravy would be an absolute winner. The only problem is you've got to roast off vegetables, which is a bit of a faff. But making a stock is a bit of a faff. So you kind of pick your pick your faff and how much you kind of want to do. Um, so we'll let that cool and drain and we'll give it a good old squeeze and get as much flavor out of that as possible. And then we'll doctor these two with a few bits of, of OXO uh, and we'll see how it compares to that. Hmm, yes. But there you go, but so far, thicken that up with some gravy granules. I've got some somewhere, I'll just, We'll have a talk about them. Right, just some um, gravy granules from the supermarket. And, and all I really do with these is just use them as a, a easy way to thicken things like gravies. Because generally when I'm making gravy, there's already lots of flavour in the liquid that I'm going to make the, the gravy out of. So I just use these as a thickening agent, really. And they give a little bit of saltiness and they get um, like a meatiness to them. But they're mostly just an easy way to thicken things up and to keep things quite clear um, rather than going the, the using flour and fat to thicken a sauce which makes things a, a little bit cloudy so but if you're just using these as a thickening agent that's pretty good so we have given it a good old squeeze and moved it around um, as we've kind of squeezed it we've kind of like moved it around in the cloth so we'll just give you a quick demonstration something I keep repeating in videos but anyway so what happens is when you when you squeeze the moisture out of something, you're only really squeezing the outside of the uh, pulp on the inside, so that the moisture only comes from the outside of the pulp. So you have to massage the pulp to get the inside of the pulp to the outside of the pulp, and then you can squeeze more juice out of it. Otherwise, you just end up with dry around the outside and wet and the inside. So you can see how much liquid we've squeezed out of that pulp, and we are left with. Let's get rid of that. Out of the way, that'll get used for something else. Not just in the wash, just get in the hands, and then we're left with how much stock are we left with there? If I could just see the mark, we're left with 800 millilitres. So that was a quarter of all the vegetables and all that stuff, was it? Yeah, it was a quarter. So that's 800 millilitres. So we can, I'll do some workings out and then we can work out how much ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, oh, oh. that's going there too full. so hmm, just a quick taste Create a bit more washing up off that tastes better oh that tastes nice cool yeah that's more carroty because obviously squeeze squeeze there was quite a lot of carrot in there anyway so We'll heat those up with a bit of 
and then we'll come with some oxo in and then we'll um we'll show about making like upping your stock stock grade again uh, as easy as possible right i have heated up the three stocks um and put 250 milliliters in uh there's 250 milliliters in each and then i was reading the packet of these oxo and it says um, one oxo cube does 190 milliliters worth of liquid i think that's too much i think that's too much but maybe i should do one with some just in some plain water no because not doing that we're we doing this so i reckon see we can always add a little bit more but to kind of take away is kind of quite difficult so we will sprinkle a quarter of a cube of oxo in there into this pan and we'll kind of see what it tastes like now i prefer oxo if i'm honest i think stock cubes like that i bought them especially i don't think they're just quite as nice um i don't know what the reason is we could look at the ingredients that's not otherwise it'll get a little bit too long so that's all melted ish so we'll see so this is the the unsqueezed stock so just the liquid vegetables drained out of the liquid and then we're going to thicken we're going to also going to thicken some up with some of this um, cheap gravy granules as well just as a bit of an experiment so that's not dissolving particularly very well is it not to worry we'll taste and we'll see what we think right it needs half a stock cube that's pretty good though that's upped the flavor of the stock no end does that And then once we get the ratio right on this one, we'll put the ratio, the same ratio into the other two and kind of see which is for the best. But this is certainly going to up your gravy gain. Or if you're using stocking things and you want kind of want to improve, like adding a, a better quality wine to a to a beef and red wine or a, like type type of thing, you know, you get a, a better you bet you get a better outcome. You know, from uh, maybe three, three, three quid more on a on a on a bottle of wine rather than the cheap stuff that you just use for cooking, or just getting drunk in the park when you're underage. That's vastly improved, is that so? And it's not too salty. So I think if we if we put any more in than that, it's going to be too salty, which is something you've got to be careful with, this docs. Right, that's delicious. So let's add the same amount of oxo to those two and give those a taste. I'll pause because you don't need to see it. Right, so let's give them a taste. We can turn the heat off on that one because it'll just end up reducing the flavour. So this is the one that was just the liquid strained off the vegetables. That's very nice. Off my spoon. This is the one where we pureed the vegetables and then strained it through a cloth. Even better, even better. That's very good. And then this is the one with the roasted vegetables. That's delicious. That is delicious. That's really delicious. Is that one? Hmm, that's kind of quite interesting. Hmm. Yeah, things to think about there. So, three ways. Of improving your stocks and gravies in varying degrees. So that one chops up, chops up some vegetables, strain off the liquid, relatively easy. You've got the cost of the vegetables, obviously, which makes it more expensive. But we're this is not about expense. This is about improving your stock game. So relatively easy, and then we can puree the vegetables and squeeze them and put them through a cloth. A little bit more complicated, a little bit more work, but we, we get a vast, vastly improved uh, flavour. Not vastly improved flavour, that was kind of like the wrong word, but an improved flavour for a little bit more work. And then the roasting of the vegetables, which is particularly good. And that tastes, with the addition of half a stock cube for 200, per 250 millilitres, that tastes like I imagine a beef stock will always should taste, which is kind of quite a bizarre thing. So, all very interesting. Now, 
Oh yeah, I was thinking as well. Yeah, so if you they sell this in the supermarket, it's grey brownie, uh, which has it's flavourless, but it adds colour. It's basically just burnt sugar you know, and turned into a caramel, and that will improve the flavour, and that will improve the colour of your gravy and stocks. So this one's got an orangey tinge to it because we squeeze the vegetables, uh, we puree the vegetables and put them through a cloth. Uh, so, but that could benefit from a little bit more colour, so it looked like that. Right now, let's turn this on, get it boiling, and let's. Just uh, I'll pause, but then we'll uh, we'll we'll use these gravy granules to see how they turn out. So let's add these gravy granules. Now they're not. There's little bits of problems with these cheap gravy granules. Like they don't want to. They might be might be a little bit lumpy. You know, like they just don't take as much care making these as they as they do with uh, with better, well, more expensive ones. Let's uh, let's not use the better quality because mm, we don't know do we they'll probably all come out the same factory but I think a little less care is taken with these cheaper ones let's put the lid back on but if you're just using them as a thickening agent they do the job without having to make a roux and if you're just using them for a thickening agent they don't need to be expensive ones that's, that's melting pretty okay and then we've got a spoon to taste, so probably a little bit thin for a, a gravy. Let's add a little bit more. Not much. Oh, very interesting, me adding gravy granules to homemade stock isn't it you kind of want I want my gravy to taste like I could put it in the mug and drink it like soup or eat it like soup it wants to be that kind of nice it's certainly a good gravy is going to add much more flavor to you finished dish so, oh. That'll do, that's thick enough. How's it taste? That's, that's about good consistency for your gravy. That's delicious. Is that? That's delicious. Considering we use cheap gravy granules and not that much oxo. That is delicious. I'd drink that on a morning. For what we call it, uh, to start my day off. Absolutely, is that absolutely delicious? So there we go. Three ways to improve your stock, uh, and depending on how much work you want to put into it. But I think that's a success. I'm going to experiment more in the future with that one because that's kind of quite interesting. That's kind of quite interesting hmm yes so a success rather a little bit long but oh we should do oh, we should put some gravy browning in that one shouldn't we just to kind of improve the flavor so it's a little bit murky it's a little bit orangey just a little dash of too much gravy browning in that one and you'll see how much it improves the color so there you go that flavor is that color has now vastly improved by just a little bit of gravy browning and generally it's a colour of things that, in, that kind of improves how it looks so a darker richer gravy um, suggests that it's going to taste nicer than it actually does if that makes sense so something that's not particularly a nice colour a little bit insipid in colour it's not pleasing to the eye, so, it's, you, so your brain automatically thinks it's not going to taste as good. I often find that with um, vegetarian or vegan or vegetable gravies. I find them, they really need to up the colour, you know, to kind of give it a, a better colour because I just find them looking a bit insipid. But that's delicious. That's delicious. But there we go. A, something else I need to do. Oh, yeah. Mindless, mindless information. So, um... The first head chef I worked for, um, still a really good friend, um, 
he was a baker um, for a, a part of his career and he would use gravy browning in rich fruit cakes so um, and it would improve the it would make a fruit cake dark in color and therefore people would assume it was going to be richer in flavor so he'd add a little bit of gravy browning to his fruit cake uh, dark, uh, rich fruit cake um, and then bake it and it would be a darker cake and people think it was automatically luxurious just another one of those ways that he would trick people no that's, that's that, that gives a wrong impression about him he was very good at making flavor flavor from from nothing and giving the appearance of things were more luxurious than they were he, he worked in some really good restaurants and then took all that knowledge and then kind of simplified it and did it cheaper so kind of what was the essence of a dish how can we kind of improve it so like a rich fruit cake there's a lot of there's a lot of cost in the in the fruit um, and if you're trying to kind of cut costs you might lose use fruit that's just not quite as good a quality so to compensate for that kind of quality what Peter would do I've given his name um, would use things like that um, which he was absolute genius of you know it's still my favorite chef to work for by far by far um, but there we go so there we go success and I might just knock off that last bit of the video